Fun fact, archaeologists have recently discovered evidence that Neanderthals 40 to 50,000 years ago were using pine resin based adhesives to attach stone tools to wooden and bone handles. If you look across YouTube and the rest of the internet for that matter, you're going to come up with a lot of different formulations for pine pitch glue. All of them use pine resin and charcoal in varying quantities. Some of them, about half of the recipes I've found, use finely ground organic matter in the form of rabbit poo or droppings of other herbivores like deer and elk. Here's a chunk of pine resin that I cleaned up in another video. And here is a chunk of charcoal that I pulled out of my backyard fire pit. I was curious if there was an optimum formulation for paleo or pine pitch glue that was particularly strong. Well, I did some internet sleuthing and I came across this article. I'll put a link to this article down in the description of this video. This article was published in 2017 in the Journal of Archaeological Science. The name of the article is Laboratory Strength Testing of Pine Wood and Birch Bark Adhesives, a first study of the material properties of pitch. It's a peer-reviewed article. It's about 10 pages long. Lots of references at the back. And the authors tested a variety of uh, primitive natural material glues. And uh, they, they did a, a series of different tests. And in Table 2, they list some of the strengths. I'm not going to get into all the details, but the strongest glue that they came up with was made from pine resin and charcoal. And it was by weight 90% uh, pine resin and 10% by weight charcoal. So that's what I'm going to try. Uh, they didn't discuss using any organic material. Maybe that was too delicate of a subject to discuss in a peer-reviewed article, and maybe they just didn't have access to a ready supply. I, on the other hand, have a friend who raises uh, Flemish giant rabbits, and I have access to an unlimited supply of rabbit droppings just for the asking. So the glue that I'm going to make, I'm going to start with uh, uh, what the authors of this article suggest. I'm going to do a 9 to 1 by weight uh, pine resin to charcoal mixture and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a little bit of the charcoal out and add in some of the ground rabbit droppings. That's my goal. That's what I think I'm going to try for the rest of this video. Hope you'll stay tuned. Here are my ingredients all carefully measured out using a digital scale. I've got 36 grams of clean pine resin on the left and 4 grams of charcoal there in the middle. That gives me an overall weight ratio of 9 to 1, meaning that my charcoal is 10% by weight compared to the combined resin plus charcoal mixture. I also decided I'm going to add in a few crushed up rabbit pellets. Four of them weigh 1 gram. I don't think that's going to affect the weight ratio all that much. Uh, if anything, the extra organic matter ought to add some strength and rigidity to the final glue product. Well, if you're out in the woods making primitive or paleo glue by a fire pit, you're probably not going to have access to a digital scale. So to my eye, it looks like I've got between four and five times as much resin as I do charcoal. Just use that as an eyeball estimate. All right, I think it's time to go outside. Before I do that, though, I'm going to crush up the charcoal and rabbit pellets into a nice fine powder, and I'll later add that to the melted pine resin to make some pine pitch glue. All right, let's make some glue. I've got my uh, clean pine resin here in this little tin can, and I'm gonna melt it down with my little canister stove.
It's flammable. It's almost melted. Come take a look. It's not quite completely melted, but it's getting pretty thin. I've got just a little bit left. Got just a little blob done in there. I'm having my little Dixie cup here, the uh, ground up charcoal and rabbit pellets. I ground this up with a mortar and pestle down in the basement. Let's go ahead and add that in. make a little lap joint here for later testing. Now I'm going to see about making some pitch sticks. Pitch sticks are just when you uh, start rolling up some of your adhesive as it dries and cools onto the end of a stick. If it gets too hard I can warm it back up. I'm going to let that stove continue to stay lit for a little while. It's just a few degrees above freezing outside right now and that kind of made it difficult to roll that pitch glue up on the end of my sticks. The resin would harden and I'd have to reheat and so on. Made for about 15 minutes of really boring footage. So I decided I'd just come inside and show you the results. When I got done, I ended up with two really nice good sized pitch sticks and one that's just a little bit smaller. This will probably last me a good while. This by the way is the way primitive peoples would most likely have carried their adhesives with them. To use it, you just warm up the end. Nowadays you'd use a lighter or a match or something and let the glue drip down onto whatever it is you're hoping to stick together. Then you would squeeze the parts together and let it solidify. This past summer, I used some pitch glue to make that pump drill that I've got hanging back on the wall. And I'll put a link to the video I made about that pump drill down in the description. I also made this lap joint test fixture to do some informal strength testing in a few minutes. I made this out of some scrap 1x2 I had laying down in the basement. 1x2 is actually an inch and a half wide, and I marked off a square overlap area that was an inch and a half by an inch and a half, giving me an overlap ideally of about two and a quarter square inches. I looked at the joint pretty carefully though, and I'm not convinced that I got it fully evenly coated. So I'm gonna guess that I've got a coated overlap area of about two square inches. Let's go rig it up and see what it takes to pull it apart. Here's my lap joint, all 
all rigged up and ready to go. This bucket is currently empty and I've got a little over 50 pounds of my wife's dumbbells sitting out on the ground before me. I measured all of these in the bucket together before shooting this segment and I came up with 53.2 pounds. I'm going to start putting these in one at a time and uh, just see how much it'll take. Wish me luck. So far so good. If it'll take it, this will be 53.2 pounds. <laughs> well, it looks like it handled just under 50 pounds. Maybe that's not so bad. Well, that was dramatic, wasn't it? Sometimes you have to test things to failure to know just exactly how strong they are. Well, I measured that bucket plus all of the dumbbell weights just prior to the failure, and it all weighed right at 48 pounds, 48.0 pounds. And here is my lap joint pieces all pulled apart. You can see that it was an adhesion failure on this side and I haven't measured this carefully, but my, I earlier said that it looked to me like I maybe had about two square inches of uh, glue joint area. Maybe it's a little bit less than that, actually. I would guess, based on that, uh, my, uh, the, the joint was able to support about 25 PSI, just eyeball estimate. So the question is, how does that compare to what other researchers have done? It's real difficult for me to do a direct comparison to the results in this Journal of Archaeological Sciences paper. These researchers were using laboratory-grade pine resin and laboratory-grade charcoal, whatever that means. And if I do my conversions correctly, I think they were able to support quite a bit more weight than I was. I think what's most important, the biggest takeaway from this is the comparison of the various different formulations and the discovery that 10% charcoal by weight was actually the strongest. Interestingly enough, their second strongest uh, pitch glue was just plain boiled pitch. They boiled it for about 10 minutes and it was just a little bit less strong than the 10% uh, charcoal by weight formulation. So I'm real curious as to how it compares to what other researchers have done with natural found materials like I had. Uh, my pine resin came from my neighbor's yard and uh, the 27 pine trees that he cut down and the charcoal came out of my backyard fire pit. So how does other people's natural, natural found material glue compare? Well, I've only found two or three references. One was... Uh, uh, I'll put a link to this down in the description. One, one researcher, uh, YouTuber, created a video, How to Make Very Strong Natural Glue. Well, this fella had discovered and was aware of this article from the Journal of Archaeological Sciences, and he tried just plain boiled pine resin, and he glued a bunch of logs together. He glued them end to end, and he had probably... A, I don't know, a big circular area of seven, eight square inches. And he showed that he was able to support about 30 pounds. Now he had a lot larger surface area. He did not test it to failure. Um, so it's real hard to compare my results to his. Uh, there was another fella who uh, published a couple of YouTube shorts on what he called caveman glue. And his recipe was kind of by eyeball volume three parts resin to one part crushed charcoal to one part uh, beeswax. 
And I've read that beeswax can be added to some of these paleo glues, pine pitch glues, primitive glues, in order to allow some flexibility. It may reduce strength overall just a little bit, but it adds some flexibility. Um, anyway, this fellow, the fellow who made the, the videos on caveman glue, his joint failed at 50 pounds, but he was using a joint about this size. Uh, this is just one of my, my lap joint pieces, and I measured this. It's got just under eight square inches of uh, area, and he was he was gluing big joints like this. So the fellow who made the caveman glue video was able to support 50 pounds, but he was doing that over a much larger area. I think uh, the glue that I made, the 10% the, the by weight charcoal mixture, was quite a bit stronger, actually. The only other article that I found... Uh, where people have actually been uh, measuring the strength of natural found material glues was this article. It's called A Sticky Situation, Comparing the, the Adhesive Strength of Pine Resin to Commercial Glues. Um, this article was published in 2019 by a couple of students at the University of British Columbia. They were also aware of this Journal of Archaeological Sciences article, and they noticed that the second strongest glue was just plain boiled pine resin, and so that's what they used. But for their project, what they did was they took half-inch dowel rods, glued them into half-inch holes, let that set up, and then they pulled it apart. And that was just not what I was doing. I don't know how to do apples-to-apples -apples comparison to those two projects. Nevertheless, they were able to demonstrate that uh, just plain boiled pine resin was pretty, pretty tough stuff. Anyway, for my own purposes, I think I'm going to stick with the 10% by weight uh, charcoal mixture that I made for this video. Uh, it's pretty strong. It's, it's amazingly strong. I didn't think it was going to hold as much weight as it did. I uh, was pretty pleased. Anyhow, um, if you are aware of other researchers who've done similar work, uh, please post it up down in the, in the comments. I would love to take a look at it, and maybe that'll inspire some further research. But for now, that's enough of me talking. It's time for me to, to sign off and thank you for watching if you've made it this far. I wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I'll see you in 2024.